Sairam, Dr. Akshay. Could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey within the Sri Satya Sai Global Council? Fine, I'm Shitu. Good to see you again and looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. So I was born in Mumbai, India, and my family came to the U.S. when I was six years old. So I grew up in the U.S., typical U.S. cultural uh, interests, not really any interest in spirituality. I loved my studies and I loved sports and that was it. So then uh, through an uncle, I first heard of Bhagwan in the mid-80s and um, he was speaking very highly of Bhagwan and this was an uncle that I respected very much. So it made me think a little bit but still didn't have much interest. And then through a series of events, Swami burst into my life and uh, no turning back since then and became involved in his organization. And at first I would be the kind of person that just loved to sit in the back of the room, enjoy the program, go home. And then somehow or another, Swami would rail me into this position and that position. And and, and I've been hooked, hooked and hooked as, as, as he does. <laughs> Dr. Akshay, you're the zonal chair of zone one. I think it's one of the largest zones we have. It's huge. Can you tell us how many countries, can you give us some a feel of, you know, what countries, what regions zone one is encompassing? So zone one is Canada the United States, and the countries of the West Indies. So the West Indies, we have uh, a half dozen countries in the West Indies that currently have a presence in Global Council, and Trinidad is by far the biggest presence in the West Indies. So it's a big geographic area. Canada alone is such a big geographic. U.S. is alone in, in the Caribbean. So uh, that's one of the boons of, of um, our modern Internet age, is we're connecting at a zonal level. We have programs where Canadian devotees can interact with Trinidadian devotees, can interact with U.S. devotees. So that connectivity, that oneness has has become a little bit stronger through that connectivity. But it is hard in some respects to have a a national conference. It would be very difficult geographically. Um, But regional conferences like the one we're in today is is a wonderful uh, activity. Dr. Akshay, can you share some projects and initiatives undertaken by your zone that you have found really inspiring? That's difficult because um, there's so many activities going on. All the time, every day of the week, something is going on. So what I can say is in the, in the U.S., a uh, particular project that comes to mind is the SEVA. They call it an open market SEVA. And what they've done is they've set up a marketplace with goods, as you would go into a marketplace, cans of foods and vegetables and supplies and toiletries, and they lay it out as an open market, and families can come and select the items that they need. And they strategically picked an area where there are lots of refugees. And what happens with refugees is they're not here legally, and so they're not tapped into the infrastructure of the government, and they're very afraid to come forward. So they're, they're left. And Swami always wants us to go where the need is and address the needs in your community. So there was the local people saw the need was there and, and uh, it turned into a monthly project. Five different centers from New Jersey came together. And it was such an elevating project that our Sri Satya Sai Global Council Foundation, when they heard about the project, we wanted to get involved and, and supported some of that as well. That's amazing. So has this spread into other areas? So it started out with one center okay. and spread to five centers in that area. And I think this is a concept that can spread even wider. Could you discuss an achievement that has had a profound effect on the local community? And, and what do you think how a part was in making it a success? One thing comes to mind is uh, in Trinidad, in our zone, in the West Indies, there's a beautiful project where they reached out to a juvenile prison. So these are young young men and women that uh, made some bad decisions and uh, had to be isolated in society. So the Sai Center has been quarterly visit, visiting them and bringing in multi-faith prayers because some of them are, are Christian, some of them follow Islam, some of them are Hindus, and turned it as a multicultural mm-hmm. society. And so they bring in multicultural, multi-faith uh, initiatives. They have talks. They share values. They play games. Uh, and the, the feedback from the inmates has been they just look forward to those visits. They find it very transformative. They get introduced to values. 
helping them set the right foot to move back into society and into it. That's been a very elevating. Uh, so how do you incorporate Swami's teachings within these projects and initiatives across the zone? And I think that's, that's a good question because I think that should be our mindset, is anytime we engage with the community, yes, we want to do seva, but the seva can be so much more meaningful, both for the person performing the seva and the person receiving the seva, if it's not only done with love, not only providing a material comfort or, or something bodily need that needs to be addressed, but more importantly, introducing principles. You know, we've been given these sacred principles from Bhagwan, the wisdom of the ages just distilled into such a simple, understandable format. So when one of the things, going back to one of the Saver projects, is when they hand out sandwiches, they would wrap the sandwiches in a saying of Bhagwan's, you know, love all, serve all, or a quote. And one of the feedback we got from the participants is they look forward to the quote more than the sandwich. So introducing these values because they're inherent in us. So when we, when we share them, they resonate with people. And so whatever seva we're doing, we want to show how using love, using truth, using nonviolence, using peace, using right action in every step of the way is very fruitful and, and, and it makes life richer. And so, of course, it's not, a, it's not something that we're separately packaging to them and saying, you need to follow these human values. We just subtly, uh, subliminally introduce those concepts because they're naturally inherent in everything we do. So we demonstrate it more than we talk about it, and then we can mention a few things as well. Perfect. Another project that I, I think is very inspiring is uh, from Canada. Several of the devotees, many of them alumni from Bhagwan's institutions, felt like they wanted to capture the poems that Bhagwan would, would many times start his discourses or, or embed them in his discourses, the padyams, these beautiful poems that are just melodically beautiful, and the message is so sweet and, and relevant. So they've taken an initiative where they're releasing one padyam every month or so or every other week. And I think they're up to 26. And what they do is they'll analyze it, they'll translate it, they'll discuss it, talk it just like a study circle so we can understand it. So then people that don't speak Telugu, like myself, are learning the beauty of the language, the beauty of the language of the avatar, and, and, and learning these beautiful padyams that are just so, such a treasure. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about being the zonal chair for Zone 1? Easily, the answer is the, the satsang, the, the company of spiritual people, people on the same path that value the same guru, the same God that I value, and learning from them. And it's, it's very, very humbling. Going from center to center, I realize what is true devotion, what is true service, what is true sacrifice. And I'm just humbled every time I visit centers, visit devotees. And I think this is one of the reasons Swami put me in this position is to show me, hey, this is what a real devotee is like. This is what you need to aspire to. So you've seen a transformation in yourself over the process. Absolutely. It hasn't been easy. And uh, Swami is the, the master at uh, uh, teaching. And his, his, his duty is to teach us. He's taken on that responsibility in this body, in this avatar, to lead us on this spiritual path. And so he's... he's uh, from the very beginning, been working on the ego and smashing it and crushing it. And Oh, he's very good at that. He's very good at that. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey, wonderful journey. Dr. Akshay, in what ways do you encourage active participation from the devotees across the zone? Because America, well, zone one is huge. How do you link everybody together and how do you get everybody working together? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. I think... Firstly, the center is the heart. The center is the heart of the organization. So the first step is to get the center together. And for the center to be together, the family has to be together. And so a center that involves the entire family. So I think that's one of the things we, we recommend is pick activities where the entire family can come, the grandparents, the children, the young adults, have something that everyone can relate to. So the, the family is united, the center is united, 
and then they can unite with the community, address a project. So I think that's really 90% of what we do in the organization. And then, of course, we have a network where centers can communicate with other centers. We have a linkage through regions and nationally. We have a, a national core team that is familiar with what's happening with different centers. They're like a relay station. They see some of the best projects that are happening, and they help other people network with each other so we can learn to love more and love better and harder and learn to serve more. So, so being united at the family level, the center should facilitate that. And then the centers, I think this organization that Bhagwan started, I, I think the question was framed beautifully, is it's all about unity. And so I don't think Bhagwan ever wanted a Sai center to be an island in and of itself. Not an island in the community. We're a part of our community. We owe everything we have to our community. So we have to give back to our community. And also not an island with the rest of the organization, right? So I mean, you know, it's like a family. Would the father be happy if the three brothers are living their own lives and never interacting? No. So the center should be engaged with each other along with being engaged with the community. And the way to enhance that is to offer things that are meaningful to them, meaningful to them in their day-to-day -day lives, inspiring them and letting them, you know, feel like it's their center. And they should feel, every person should feel, this is my center. This is my Bhagwan center who resides in me and have some meaningful activity. Because if it's a meaningful activity, they're going to come. You don't have to convince anybody to come. Swami emphasizes unity a lot. How have you, as Zone 1 Chair, brought everybody together in such a vast zone? One of the things that when, when Global Council was formed... The, the stress from all parties was, what would make Bhagwan most proud? And it, the, the answer, obviously, was unity. Whenever we were united, Swami was happy. And so I've seen that as Zone Chair manifest in, in, in every area of the organization. For instance, uh, we collaborate with other zones, not only formally with our executive committee meetings, meeting with the other zone chairs, but also in the U.S., we have our Sri Satisai Global Council Foundation that we formed two years ago. And it's turned out to be a beautiful vehicle. Many devotees come and they want to support the Global Council Foundation. And through their generosity, we've been able to expand this concept of unity. So one of the projects that we did is we worked closely with uh, Zone 4 and Nepal. And we found that they were doing some very meaningful projects. And one of them was to build a women's shelter. And so uh, with discussion with the, with the zonal chair, Mr. Amar Karki, we thought, wouldn't this be a wonderful way that we can collaborate as zones? And so they uh, presented what they were doing. Uh, the foundation met and thought that this was such a wonderful project that we were so gracious. They were so gracious for allowing us to participate. So we were able to provide some funds so they can build a women's shelter. Same thing, they, they uh, did a beautiful water project uh, up, up in the hills in Nepal, a very remote village, and we were able to participate and help support that. Um, the, the, uh, the foundation's also been able to help. M many devotees want to help the Central Trust. They feel like Swami's institutions belongs to every devotee, and so they utilize the foundation to help buy equipment for Bhagwan's hospitals, through the Central Trust to uh, provide supplies. And so the Central Trust, the hospitals, the universities are united and connected with every devotee who has a chance to directly be involved and, and treat it as if it's their institution. So that's united devotees as well. And then, of course, even within our zone, we have the foundation supporting projects like the project I mentioned before with the uh, Open Market Seva. The foundation would, would be involved in that as well. Is this is a really important point. So for the listeners out there listening to this podcast, what are your, your top tips? What are, what is your, um, how do they connect with Swami? It's a good question. It's certainly easier to have been in his presence, the vibrations, the aura, the grace that's conferred from being in his, uh, conferred from being in his presence is irreplaceable. But for me personally, what drew me into Swami are the teachings. 
Um, I, I, bhajans didn't interest me. Uh, that came later. Um, the seva was always interesting, but it came later. But for me, the, the teachings is what drew me in. And the teachings are available now as much as they were when he was in the physical presence. Um, and so delving into the teachings of Bhagwan connects you to Bhagwan. And the, the organization that he started is a mechanism to A, practice those teachings, put them into practice, and B, be able to serve Bhagwan. So if we couldn't serve Bhagwan in the physical presence, he creates something where we get the same benefits as if we were serving him. So engaging and learning and practicing his teachings and getting an opportunity to serve and play a role, like, uh, uh, you know, the squirrel played a role in creating the bridge to Lanka. You know, each one of us can play you know, a, a small role in that sense, but we're, we're getting to play that role. And who benefits from that? We benefit. And of course, society will benefit yes. as well. For you, what's been your most favorite thing that you'll remember? You'll, you know, when you finish your term, what are you going to remember the most? Wow, that's another another tough question. You know, I think it, it has been a challenging time. It, it, it's uh, on, on every level, socially, financially, culturally. There's so many clashes and conflicts and differences in the society around us. And sometimes that'll penetrate into a spiritual organization. And so I think the, the saying is, when, when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade. And so I think the devotees really did that. They, you know, we were forced to isolate in the pandemic. So now everybody learned. We, luckily in our side community, we have so many talented people in media and tech and IT. So they immediately rallied around. And that was an opportunity that they could give some meaningful seva, even more than they already had been. So Zoom, Zoom calls, teleconferences, all of those really, you know, even when the pandemic is over now, we've realized what a powerful tool they can be. So, so I think that was wonderful to be able to develop relationships that people we might see once a year, maybe once every few years at a conference. Now we could develop a relationship with people from the UK, like yourself. And you, I know you had come in and shared some of your leadership knowledge and skills with, with our devotees. Uh, so we had different zone shares from around the world come in. So I think if I had to say something, it's expanding the influence of relationship, the intimacy of relationships. For any of our listeners listening to your inspiring words on this podcast in Zone 1 who are not part of a center, who are not part of a community, how can they get involved? Because it feels like there's so many activities that are happening you know, and, you know, if I'm listening, I, I, I really, you know, I want to get involved. I want to be part of some of these projects. How can I get involved? I think it's twofold. Um, on the one level, it's not our duty to draw people in. Bhagwan will decide who goes and, and, and knows of him and all of that. But on the other hand, it is our duty to not be selfish, and just because we've benefited from Bhagwan and all that he's gave us and, and how he's helped our, our, our families and helped our personal situations and given this, this treasure of his teachings, if we don't share that with society, how, how selfish are we? You know, how much have we benefited from Bhagwan and his teachings? So it's our duty, and Bhagwan tells us this, it's our duty to get involved and share those teachings. We may not necessarily need to share that Bhagwan is an avatar and, and that name and form that's dear to us has to be dear to them. That can come, that's up to him. But the teachings, I think it is our duty. So we need to demonstrate those teachings in our lives. So when people do come, people, when people hear about Swami and they look up the local center, either through our website, uh, we have a, a zonal website, we have a national website, we have regional websites. So many people, or through neighbors, if they hear about Bhagwan, they're impressed, right? Once you see Bhagwan, if you've been blessed to read a little bit about Bhagwan, what he's done, they're blessed. But then when they come to the center, if they don't see us behaving like Bhagwan, we can turn them away. So I think it's our duty to share. It's our duty to be like Bhagwan and, 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 and have people feel that love. When, we, when you're with Bhagwan, you feel that love. You feel that tenderness. You feel that caring. You feel that connectivity. This is what we need to do in our centers. So when people come in, that's what they see, that's what they feel, and then they're going to want to come. 
One last question, Dr. Akshay. Do you have a message for any of our listeners? The message is to use Bhagwan. Read his message, I think. Ritual is, you know, I used to be one of these anti-ritual guys growing up. Ah, you know, rituals. Why do people get involved in rituals? And as I've gotten older and a little bit wiser, I have a long way to go, I, I realize the power of rituals. And so I think we can create some rituals of Bhagwan. And simple rituals are perhaps the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is give gratitude to Bhagwan. Say, Bhagwan, thank you. Thank you for this another day. Please guide me to do something that will make you proud. Please help me advance on the spiritual path with whatever you give me, because I know you're going to give me exactly what I need on the spiritual path. And then every time you start your day's work, Bhagwan, thank you for the opportunity to do this work. Please guide me. I'm offering it to you. Every meal you eat, Bhagwan, thank you for this meal. Um, so great that I have this opportunity to nourish this body that you've gifted to me. When you retire in the evening, thank you, Bhagwan, for this day. Uh, if I made any mistakes, please guide me not to make them again. Please forgive me. Uh, please help me be a better person. And, and then maybe read passage, read a thought for the day right before you go to bed. So the very last thing you do before your head rests the pillow is read a message from Bhagwan. So ritualizing Bhagwan in our lives I think, helps hit that reset button several times throughout the life. Because as you know, life is crazy, and you get caught up in that craziness. And so if there's several times during the day, you can hit that reset button and realign with Bhagwan. Now, those rituals, I think, can be very powerful. So that would be my advice to the SSE children, to the young adults. Establish that pattern of rituals to connect the Bhagwan throughout the day. Dr. Akshay, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on all the wonderful activities and initiatives that are taking place in Zone 1. My pleasure, Shitu. It's, I love being with Sai devotees, talking about Bhagwan, and being inspired by Bhagwan. So it's, it's just a, it's a gift, and it's one of the things that I am most grateful for. Thank you. Sai Dam so much. Good talking to you. 